Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at how you can use the navigation instruments in the Twin Otter. So there are three of them. There's this instrument, which is the primary navigation radio. You can use this one, which is the second navigation radio. And we can use the ADF. Uh, currently, they're all, I would say, not working. And what I mean with not working, there might be a frequency programmed, but uh, normally when you're on the ground, they won't react a lot until you go airborne. So how can we configure those instruments? Well, that's between brackets relatively easy. The first thing what you would normally do is set up a fly plan. But since we're not doing that as we speak, I'm also going to show you a way how you can figure out what the navigation frequencies or VOR beacons uh, are I would say very close to you and you can do that by using the large knob the large knob will bring you to the nearest option and using the small knob you can move from airports to intersections to NDBs to VORs and that will show you a lot of information for example the bearing to the waypoint the distance but also the frequency navigation radio A can be found here and these are the frequencies, so currently it's being set to 115.20 and the standby frequency is 109.10. To change the navigation radio, you need to press this button, which will mark the standby frequency as light blue. And then change the frequency to the correct one. To make the standby uh, frequency at the active one, you're going to press the frequency swap button. There's one thing which is critical, and that is that you need to change this button to CDI to make sure that you can use the navigation instruments. If you don't do it, it will use GPS. The second navigation radio is here. It's part of the GNS 430, and you can change the frequency again using the same button. So let's set it to 11400. And then press the same button again. And you can see that this one is already set to VLOG because you set it here to VLOG. So we now have set up thus as the uh, primary VOR beacon and uh, BAM as the second one. The same thing can be done for the NDB. And the NDBs are showing the same direction, distance and frequency. I must warn you, for example, this one contains dot five. But if you look at the instrument which we're going to use to configure the frequency, you can see that you can't configure the uh, let's say number after the comma. In that case, round it up to the top, which means that this one would be 407, and then it normally works. For now, we're going to use uh, LI, which is on 417. So we're going to use this button to change the frequency, and you can see that we can change the last digit to change the uh, digit before. Press the button, oh, and then change it. 4, 1 and then, then change this one to 7 and use a large knob to, large knob to change this one, number 100 and then press the frequency swap button you can see that we now configured everything but still nothing is I would say being displayed here right so still nothing useful here so that's I would say too bad for us but it's kind of expected so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take off and then we're going to use those instruments. <laughs> so here we are. We're going airborne. I need to avoid watch out we're not climbing too fast because that's not really what we want and then within a few seconds you will see things are changing so first things which are changing on the navigation radio is that they show the radius and the distance you can see the same thing at the bottom that's only for the VR beacons the other things you're seeing is that this now totally looks different so we're gonna look at the first navigation radio first so we're gonna want to fly to the 
uh, beacon. So what you can do is you can use the CDI button to configure if you want to fly away from the beacon. So if we would fly, uh, I would say in this direction we would fly away. Or you can continue turning around and then you will find the other way. And that's, I would say, the other way. Say the correct direction you want in which you want to fly. In the meantime, the aircraft is keeps turning. And you can, could see, well, maybe I turned it too fast, that this uh, triangle now changed from the other end to this end. So let me, you see, here was a swap. So if we're turning into this direction, then we're going to fly to it. Keep an eye on the. Uh, altitude also so if we would fly this direction then we would go straight to the beacon to use the autopilot for that you activate the nav mode and then switch on the autopilot that will make sure that we're flying to that beacon right so give it some time to realign that's no problem and that's how you can use this nice navigation system right so you can use the cdi to center but you can also decide to would say to not fly straight over the beacon but maybe a little bit uh, further down that's why these uh, arrows are for and i think every angle stands for 10 or 20 degrees if i'm correct maybe it's different if it's different then feel free to leave a comment in the comment box below of uh, this video what the thought it was something like that so we can change that and we're now flying to the beacon the same thing can be done for the second navigation radio. You can use the OBS button uh, to, I would say, figure out what's the frequency in which we need to fly to. In this case, we're also flying away from it if we would fly this direction. So if we would change it, oh, push the wrong button. change the button and here you saw the swap again right so let me go back so we're flying away from it we're flying straight to it and then, can, then you can uh, keep turning until it come on yeah it goes to the center right so if we would fly this direction then we would fly straight to the beacon so that's how you can use these systems don't be afraid that if they start, I would say, continue to swap because that's normally, so you normally need to readjust them while you're flying. If you're coming very close to them, then don't touch the buttons anymore because then they will become so, I would say, then dynamic that you can't fly 100% correct uh, over it. So then leave them and uh, then eventually they will change to the different direction. And that's, I would say, also the ID. Uh, once we're uh, at uh, dust, then you will see that the arrow starts to switch down that's perfectly normal don't change it one thing i want to warn you about is that if you change the standby frequency and for example in our case we flew over at the store and want to fly to the next one if you press this button then the navigation mode will be disabled so make sure that you re-enable the uh, navigation mode uh, once you've done that and this one continues to turn right because probably the beacon is a different direction than we want to fly so the other thing is that you can use the uh, CDI, right? So the CDI is for used for NDB beacons. It uh, can also be used, uh, say, to uh, navigate your aircraft. To be honest, I still prefer to use the, uh, what is it called? The uh, fuel wash. And what you need to do is you want to change it to uh, this because that's the direction in which we're flying to which means that we should fly in this direction if we want to uh, say arrive at that NDB beacon so that's how the NDB beacon can be used the easiest ones are the uh, let's say VR ones right because they're let's say easy to program and you can also easily track the distance uh, the harder ones are the uh, NDB ones because you can't see if you're flying over it something else uh, there are some tools like uh, navigraph which can be used to figure out hey am i flying 
uh, where am I flying, uh, do I've got some other information. You can also use the VFR map for that. But in some cases, the VFR map doesn't show you all the information which you would like to see. So let's see if we can figure out something on the view, VFR map, right? Here we can see intersections. Here we can also see an airport. Some other intersections. Got EDDL, which is a beacon. But you can see that in some cases it's nasty because you really can't see it. If you would do open it with Navigraph, you would be able to see it. Uh, so that's, those are the things, right? So here's that Li one which you just programmed, right? So if we would fly into Li, this is one of the oh, and the B beacons. What was it here? So if we would fly that direction, then we would end up at uh, Li. But you can see that there are several other ones which are also shown here on the map. And those can be easily uh, discovered using either near the nearest option, right? But in normal cases, you would uh, pre-program your flight uh, and not, I would say, program your flight uh, while you're departing from the runway. So currently we're still flying in to the correct direction, right? You can see that we're still flying to uh, Dusseldorf. Also the distance to Dusseldorf is reducing, so that's good. Uh, the other one, you can see that it's not showing us a lot of information, which means that this one doesn't have DME capacity, right? Distance measure equipment capacity, which uh, will, I would say, prevent us from uh, showing how far we are from that waypoint so here we can see that we're almost bypassing an airport right so if we look very closely we can probably see it we're flying at the 3700 feet so we should be able to see it uh, soonish you can see it's a little bit cloudy so officially you can't fly via far right And here is dust, right? So this is Dusseldorf. So it's Dusseldorf Airport, which we're flying over. Or the city of Dusseldorf, probably. No, the beacon. Yeah. So if we're lucky and if we're zooming in now, set on GPS tracking. Then you will see that dust is now here, right? So sometimes you can see them, but sometimes it's really hard to find them on the VFR map. So let's keep an eye on this one because this one will soon start to act pretty weird because we're flying over the beacon and as soon as we did bypass the beacon you will see that this one starts to flip around. So let's wait for it to happen. You can already see that it's starting to act. You can now see that it's saying hey I don't know where to look at it's a very, for a very short period but if we now look closely we can see that we're flying away from the beacon so that's what I meant is hey you can still use this beacon for making sure that you're flying I'd say outbound of a specific beacon right so in this video we looked at the multiple navigation options which you can use right you can use the navigation radio 1 navigation radio 2 or you can use the ADF which one you I want to use depends on what you prefer but also sometimes on what's available because not all uh, countries do have all beacons available and you might want, uh, need to use a combination of uh, say VR and NDBs etc so keep that in mind here ends this video, I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.